This is the old camshaft position timing actuator. I just took off of my 2016 Equinox. It was all clogged with debris. And this is the reason why I was getting the P0010 fault code. I'll show you how you can replace it with a brand new one in about a half an hour. Step one is you're going to remove this hose clamp and this hose clamp right down here in the front. You can either use a flathead screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket. Next, you want to unplug this on the side of the engine and uh, you just got to wiggle it. Just take your time. Don't rip it out. Just take your time back and forth pulling as you as you wriggle it back up. So then you just pull this hose clamp off and it's sitting on these two pins back here. So pull it off that and the whole thing just lifts right off. Now you can see this is the throttle body down here and looking in there, mine is pretty dirty. So I'm gonna clean this right now, but I'm just gonna spray all this gunk. I can see it on the inside there. So I'm gonna get all this black gunk off the throttle body. I'm just gonna clean it with uh, some carb or throttle body cleaner. And if you give it a little push, you can open up that butterfly valve. So give it a little push in and that'll open up, clean all this off. Okay, spent about two minutes cleaning this up and you can see all the soot and black that was on there. Um, this was not the problem, but it's a good time to clean it up and uh, get it nice and clean and kind of prevent anything from happening future. And to remove this cover, you just remove the oil cap and it'll lift now from the front. You can just pop it up. Next, it is a great idea to put your oil cap back on so nothing falls in there. Now, the part we want to replace is this one right here. That's A and that's B, that's intake and exhaust. I'm just gonna replace this one for now. You could replace both, I'm just gonna replace this one. Now, it is a good idea to clean out around this because you're gonna be lifting this off and you don't want anything falling down in there. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes trying to clean out all around in here. Now we need to lift this gray clip off and you can use that same flathead screwdriver and just take your time, lift up on it and pry on one edge then pry on the other edge. Take your time, don't force it, it could break. Once you have that lifted up, you can leave it there or you can completely remove it if you want, but that's unlocked. Next, you are going to push in on this black piece and lift up. So I'm pushing in on the black plastic and again, taking your time and lifting up. It's better if you take your time and get it off than if you rush it and break something. There we go. It actually worked better if I wiggled it this way instead of that way, so take your time. Next, you need a 10 millimeter socket. 10 millimeter, and you probably want an extension because you're gonna remove this bolt right down here. And again, you wanna take your time, wiggle it, get it a little bit loose, and then I'm gonna come back with some pliers and lift it up. Get the bolt out of there. I'm just kind of moving it back and forth a little, putting the screwdriver on that uh, opening for the bolt, twisting it sideways, left and right. There, now it's really wiggling. Now I'm gonna come back with some pliers. And there we go. It should pull up straight out. And you can see all the oil dripping off of it and all the gunk that's on it. See, it's all clogged right there and right there. Now you could take some WD-40 and wash this off and reuse it, but I'm just gonna replace it because it's so cheap. Now, if you wanted to test to see if this old part was still good, you could apply 12 volts from the battery and you should be able to hear the solenoid clicking up and down. Just shaking it, it sounds a little looser than the new one. This one, I can barely hear that thing rattling. 
This one, I can really hear it shaking in there. So something seems a lot more looser than in the new one. This one seems solid. So uh, it might still be intermittently working, but I'm gonna replace it. And installation, same process in reverse, line this up with the bolt, um, and I don't wanna knock anything in there. So straight down, kind of wriggle it in there till it seats itself nice and tight. And now install the new bolt. There we go, nice and tight. Install the cable back. And these cables only work one way, so you can't, if you're doing both of these, these aren't uh, interchangeable. They have tabs on the side. Click it down and then click the lock on there. Now we can reinstall this cover and you can see where the tabs go. There's three and then the oil cap. So I'm gonna remove the oil cap going under this pipe here. And once you line up that oil cap, again, so you don't knock anything in there, put that back on, find those pins. There's one, there you go. You can feel them just kind of seat themselves. Then you can reinstall the air box. Again, there's two pins in the back. Then everything else should line back up. And don't forget this pipe over here. Make sure you connect that back on there. Clicks in, then we'll tighten these up and we'll be good to go. So let's start it up and see how it goes. If you do this and do need to reset it, you can use this. This is the OBD sensor and this plugs in underneath here. And once you do it, you can use your phone and you can check those messages and you can reset a check engine light. So if that doesn't turn off, you can buy one of these and that'll reset your check engine, but it should turn off automatically. So the whole process takes less than a half an hour. It helps though that we got that error code. If you don't get that error code, you're guessing, is it the timing chain, is it the throttle body? Once you get that error code, P0010, you know exactly what part needs to be replaced. Um, but like I said, since you have this off, you might as well clean out that throttle body anyways. So I hope this helps. Thanks.